Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to take a look at setting up a Raspberry Pi and a Baofeng radio as an APRS Digipeter. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Before we get started, I've got to welcome Anthony and Claude to the Patreon community. They're the newest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to join, we'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Patrons get early access to many of the YouTube videos. Now, we will be using the Baofeng radio for today's demonstration, but if you're a Baofeng hater, stick around anyway because you can use almost any radio with this setup. It's just going to require a different cable, but over on the MobiLink page, they have cables for all kinds of different radios, so you can probably find one to suit your needs, regardless of the radio that you choose to use. Now, the one thing I'm going to assume uh, starting out in this video is that you already have your MobiLink TNC configured for your particular radio. You can download an app for Android and iPhone devices that'll allow you to connect to the MobiLink and set up the configuration for the particular radio that you're using. Once you've finished with that uh, configuration, just go ahead and click disconnect and you'll be ready to begin this tutorial. If you need help configuring the TNC, there are some fantastic instructions uh, over on the MobiLink website. And I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. It'll depend on which TNC you're using and which uh, device you're using, either Android or Apple. Uh, but, but they do have really good uh, getting started guides over on their website. Okay, so now that we're ready to try to set this up on the Raspberry Pi, you want to make sure that you've got the fast blue blinking light on the TNC and that it's already connected up to the radio. And we'll go ahead and set our radio at uh, 144.390. Okay, so now that the blue light's blinking and we got the rig set, we're gonna go right up here to the, um, <clears throat> the Bluetooth icon and select add a device. And it's going to, the Raspberry Pi is going to do a search and look for devices. You'll have to give it just a couple of seconds and you should see the MobiLink TNC. So you want to go ahead and click pair here. And the pin code for at least the TNC2 is going to be 1234. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll basically wait for it to fail. It says it's paired, but the device has no services which can be used with the Raspberry Pi. This is exactly what we expected. So we'll say OK there. If you look here, you'll now see the MobiLink TNC2 here and an option to connect. We can't use that because we're just going to get the same error message that says no available services are on this device. So the next thing we need to do is open up our terminal window. Inside the terminal window, we're going to issue the command HCI tool space scan and go ahead and hit return. Now it'll take this, uh, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 seconds to scan through. And what we're looking for is the MAC address of the uh, TNC. So you can see it's returned that information to us. Here's our, our uh, description. And this here is our MAC address. So we're just gonna highlight that and copy that information. So the next command is going to be sudo rf rfcomm space connect forward slash dev forward slash rf com zero and then we're going to paste in the MAC address that we copied from right up here when we ran the uh, tool scan here our HCI tool scan here we'll go ahead and hit return and it's going to return this information here telling us that it's connected this uh, RFCOM0 to our MobiLink TNC on channel 1. And it'll say press control C for hang up, so you would want to do that after you're finished with this. But for now, I'm going to open a new tab uh, inside the terminal here. So control shift T for a new tab. And I'm going to run the command ls 
forward slash dev. And then I'm going to pipe that through grep. And I want to look for RF com now real quick all we're all we're doing here is we're listing out so the ls command is list this particular directory the forward slash def and instead of getting all of those contents we're going to use grep uh grep basically searches through uh the results uh that, that we're going to list out so grep is uh, basically another word for search so we're going to grep for R-F-C-O-M-M, -M, and go ahead and hit the return key, and you'll see that we do have an RFCOM0 listed there. So it looks like everything is up and working correctly. Now, I already have Exaster installed, but uh, if you don't have Exaster installed, you would want to run sudo apt-get install Exaster. And at that point, you would go ahead and press Y to get it installed. But if you see, I already have the uh, latest version installed. So to start Exaster, we're going to run sudo Exaster. And we'll give that just a second to boot up. All right, so once Exaster boots for the first time, you will see this Configure Station dialog box. And right here where it says no call, I'm going to go ahead and put my call sign, so KM4ACK, and I'm going to give it a SSID of dash 6. That's one that I use for testing quite a bit. And down here in the comment section, I'm just going to put test pi. Now, I'm going to be using a GPS today uh, to get my uh, latitude and longitude coordinates, and we'll go ahead and show you how to set that up. If you're not using a GPS, you would want to go ahead right here and enter your latitude and longitude so that it would position you correctly on the map. If this is going to be a stationary station, then there's really no reason to have the GPS. I just happen to have it on mine, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. All right, so once we've got that little bit of information, we're going to say OK here. And you'll see that it's renamed us to KM4ACK-6 here on the map. All right, so now let's start configuring a few things. So I'm going to go up to Interface and Interface Control, and I'm going to add a new interface. And the first one that I'm going to add is going to be my GPS. So I'm going to click here on the Network GPS via GPSD. And I've done a video on how to get the GPS installed on your Pi. I'll leave a link to that right up at the top if you'd like to do that on yours as well. But we'll go ahead and click the Add button here. We're going to leave all of this at default and just say OK. And then I'm going to highlight this and click the Start button. And you'll see now that that is up and running. OK, so the next thing we need to get added is the connection to the Internet. And the reason you want this added is, as your Digipeter hears calls from other APRS stations, it's going to take their information and feed it through the internet over to APRS.fi. So we'll go ahead and click Add here, and we're going to choose the internet server, and we're going to click Add. Now, once this comes up, you're going to need to find out your passcode, your APRS passcode. So to get that information, we're going to jump over to a website, and I'll leave a link to this website, the uh, passcode generator, down in the description below. So I'm going to enter my call sign, because each call sign will be different. So you'd put your own call sign in here, and click Get the Passcode. And you'll see that my passcode is right here, 20389. So let's head back over to the Raspberry Pi. And we'll go ahead and enter that information here. Now, the one thing I'm going to do, this is a filter as to uh, basically how many stations come in. Instead of 500, I typically set mine at about 100 right there. You can kind of play with that and see what you want yours to be set at. So let's go ahead and click OK there. And again, we're going to click on this one. You'll notice it says down. So we're going to click on that and click the Start button and you'll see now that it is up. Okay, so the last thing we've got to do is get Exaster talking to the MobiLink TNC. So once again, we're going to click the Add button, and this time we're going to choose Serial Kiss TNC. 
and we'll go ahead and click add again and we've got a few options here that we can uh, play with first the most important is this one here this tnc port we want to say forward slash dev forward slash rf comm zero rf com zero now, if you just want this to be an eye gate, you can kind of leave things set the way they are. If you wanted it to be a digipeter, you would want to make sure that you had this option here checked as well. And then you have to decide uh, which way you want your eye gate options to work. We can dis uh, disable all eye gate traffic. We can allow RF to the internet only which you definitely want to use that one if you want to spot people to the APRS.FI network. And this one would allow information from RF back to the internet and from the internet out to RF. Uh, I'd kind of be a little careful with that. Typically, you don't need that unless you're a pretty large uh, wide area gateway. So we'll go ahead and click OK here. And one more time, we'll click uh, the serial KISS TNC and click Start on it. And you'll notice that that one is up and running as well. Okay, so while we're in here, let's go ahead and try to make this a better looking map. So we're going to uh, go to Map and Map Chooser. And then we're going to choose this uh, OSM tiled mapnet not dot geo. And we'll go ahead and click Apply there. And that takes just a couple of minutes to get loaded in since it's downloading those tiles from the internet. And the last thing I like to do is I like to get rid of all of these grid lines. So back to map and we'll come right down here to this enable map grid and we're going to uncheck that. That'll clean up uh, the map a little bit for us. So now let's go ahead and run a test. And let's make sure that everything is transmitting correctly. Now I've got another radio set up over here so that you should be able to hear the packets as they're broadcast out from the Baofeng. And one other thing to note that I failed to mention earlier, uh, if you notice the slow blinking light, that's an indication that the MobiLink is connected to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, when we first started, we had that really fast flashing uh, blue light, now it's slowed down uh, to, to a much slower pace. All right, so let's go ahead and click the interface button and let's say transmit now. And there you go. You heard the tones coming over the radio. Now let's jump over to APRS.FI and take a look for that. So we're going to do uh, APRS.FI and we'll look at KM4ACK-6. And there's our KM4ACK-6 on the map. And you heard the tones coming out of the radio. So we should be set up and ready to roll. Please give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. And go ahead and click that subscribe button before you head off. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.